Peace family, this your boy Uncle Reem. Welcome to Uncle Reem's Reactions. Today we're going to be reviewing that new book written by Raekwon the Chef, member of the legendary group Wu-Tang Clan, entitled From Staircase to Stage. For all of those of you who are new to my channel, please don't hesitate to smash that like button. Also check out some of the other videos we have. We got videos ranging from reaction videos to videos on how to use equipment in the studio and so forth. Without further ado, Let's get into the content. From Staircase to Stage is an autobiography of rapper Raekwon the Chef of the legendary rap group Wu-Tang Clan. It is written by Raekwon as told to Anthony Baza, and it was published by Gallery Books. The book is available in all forms on practically every platform where books, ebooks, and audio books are distributed. It chronicles Raekwon's evolution from a young Corby Woods coming of age in New York City during an era that was plagued in drugs and violence. It shows the way he managed to dwell amongst such harsh realities, yet finding a way to utilize his talent and love for hip-hop music to rise above those circumstances. Additionally, Raekwon offers a unique look into the vast world that is the Wu-Tang saga, giving the reader a gamut of interesting insights into the group's development and exploits, whilst also sharing some of, at times, harsh criticisms of the group's management, particularly of the RZA, Divine, and Power. However, the remainder of the group isn't safe from his verbiage, which ranges from mild indifference to outright harsh emotional attacks. From Staircase to Stage, which is a reference to Raekwon's hit song, Incarcerated Scarfaces, from his critically acclaimed album, Only Built for Cuban Links, is both very informative and insightful. I was personally was entertained and awed by many of his stories about his tumultuous childhood, you know, his relationship with his parents, his cousins, and so forth. You know, he talked about how his dad, you know, he... He only met his dad one time, you know, how his dad was addicted to heroin. He talked about his mother and how she was in many abusive relationships. Um, you know, he, he talked about his cousin, Unique, and, you know, how his cousin Unique was a hustler and how that inspired him to want to become a hustler as well. He talked about his relationship with, with different individuals throughout his life. You know, his, his friend Jamie. I believe that his friend Jamie is power based on, you know, some of the how he said that that uh, Jamie uh, was involved in Wu-Tang management and was uh, was involved with some of the funding of Wu-Tang management, which leads me to believe knowing that he and power had a close relationship that Jamie, who he's referring to as power, also other in, other situations uh, that occurred between you know, Jamie, he, Divine, and Ghostface, um, which is something uh, something kind of touched on in the show Wu-Tang American Saga. Uh, makes me believe that the individual he talked about named Jamie is power. However, he talked about a lot of different uh, stuff about out of his childhood. And, um, you know, it's, man, this is a pretty good narration. You know, he effectively connects, uh, you know, he connect with the readers, you know, in the way that he does in his songs. He connects with us. He draws us into his gritty urban anecdotes. He talk about drug abuse, violence, and family dysfunction. And despite all that, he still managed to remain cognizant of other realities, and he sought ways to avoid the pitfalls of such a lifestyle. Despite, you know, him being a latchkey child, you know, coming of age in a poverty-stricken community, which he, you know, he articulate that very well. Um, for those of us who had similar backgrounds, we would definitely relate to a lot of his stories throughout, uh, you know, that that book, a lot of his narratives. The icing on the cake is his narration of the development of his legendary group, the Wu-Tang Clan. You know, and again, there's a lot of knowledge about Wu-Tang out there. There's a vast body of information out there. You know, they got... You know, there's books out. Other Wu Tang members have released books. Um, they have, a, you know, they have a drama show out. 
they got all type of documentaries out, multiple documentaries out. A lot of interviews you'll find on each Wu Tang member, as well as the whole collective of Wu Tang members. So there's a lot of information out there on the legendary group Wu Tang Clan. But, you know, this is his narration of the development of the group from his vantage point. And, you know, it just, you know, people who, you know, diehard fans and neophytes to the group alike, uh, you know, they'll enjoy the fresh insights that Raekwon gives from his perspective on the group. Now, the main downside of this body of work is the inconsistency of topics. Um, the way he presents each story, you know, he he tends to, you know, make a story or, you know, give a, give, you know, give a narration of one of the events of his life. Then he'll, and it won't be presented in any kind of, any kind of a uh, you know order it won't be it's just in disarray you know he presents each story in a noticeable disarray each life event doesn't really follow a cohesive timeline and the editing doesn't seem like it was that detailed considering how re re repetitious many of the events could be like he'll name some of the events he'll state an event and then he'll state that same event later a few a few paragraphs later, and it, it even in his restatement of the event sometimes will contradict the other statement of that same event. So it seems like the events are re repetitive, in, in many numerous instances throughout the book, and um, yet it doesn't get corrected during the editing. Another low point of the book is the many instances of grammatical error. Uh, some outright typographical mistakes can be found throughout the book. It seems that the book was rushed, considering how poorly the book was edited. You know, it was edited. Yeah, it, 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 it just doesn't seem that there was a lot of attention given to the editing of this book. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of choppy. You know, it's, it's kind of choppy. And it... It's not fully organized. In some part, in some places, it flows well. In other places, it's a bit choppy, and that kind of hurts the overall flow of the of the, uh, of the book. The lowest point of the book is the amount of time Raekwon chose to dedicate to griping about his relationship with RZA and Wu Tang management. His emotional, sometimes vowed and mean-spirited attacks of RZA and other group of associates detracts quite a bit from the exceptional content that makes up much of the book. I think that considering the fan base of Wu-Tang Clan, he probably should have, and, and again, you, you, you definitely want a person to... to to speak their truth and so forth, but you know, with you kind of you kind of want them to speak their truth with response, you know, just being responsible and just you know, just considering that you you know, considering your brand. Uh, for instance, a lot of us, me personally, I I look at Raekwon, you know. I see a humble, you know, he an OG that's humble, you know, that 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 had a you had a real interesting story. You know, he overcame drug addiction. You know, he talked about in his song, you know, no question I was speed from cracks and weed. The combination made my eyes bleed. He talked about how he come up, you know, in a harsh, in a harsh life, and he manages to rise above those circumstances with the help of, you know, the RZA and his other Wu Tang brethren. And he seems like the type of person that shows gratitude and, uh, you know, just a humble, solid individual. That's what he seems like. He doesn't seem like the type of person who, you know, just rant and gossip and just make a bunch of emotional attacks of somebody. Despite, you know, the differences between him and RZA. It, it kind of cheapens, it, it kind of, it, it will kind of make a fan 
view Raekwon differently as well as the whole group differently, which is okay. It's always good to know how somebody is in reality. But I think it's not necessary the manner that he goes about attacking RZA, you know. You know, he got emotional, you know, sometimes violent, mean-spirited attacks of RZA and other group associates. And um, other Wu members have written books. Other Wu members have leveled criticisms at at the group and at the group's management, RZA, Divine, his brother, his uh, power, the other, you know, Wu-Tang management. There's been other criticisms, particularly you God's book, Raw. There's some criticisms. But what you God doesn't do is he doesn't allow his criticisms of these individuals to undermine the the unity of the whole group. Some of the stuff that Raekwon states in his book will be enough for certain group members to just get pissed off and not even want to even deal with them again. Like there's a there's a part of the book where he talks about how he was gonna make a diss song to RZA. You know, there's other things. There, there's a part of the book where he actually states a personal relationship that Ghostface had with another superstar that that kind of makes Ghostface seem like he kisses, like he kisses and tells. So there's some gossipy aspects of that book that probably should have been left out because again, Raekwon is like a solid street soldier. That's a lot of our view of him, but some of the topics that's contained in this book seems that it put book sales over, you know, it put it, it kind of seemed like it put the desire to sell this book, make sure that it got some juicy new topics, new gossip about the group. Kind of it kind of sells the soul of the group to air some dirty laundry to, to to sell some books as a you know as opposed to you know, holding your tongue, you know, and, 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 and that, that just, that just cheapens again, that, that, that kind of cheapens the brand that is Raekwon the chef. And this is coming from a person who's a, who would be considered a diehard fan of the group. I own, I purchased everything, everybody of work musically that the Wu-Tang had ever produced. You know, they're very inspirational to me as an artist as an MC, as a as a beat maker and producer. So, you know, this is not coming from someone who just wants to attack Raekwon or attack this book. This is just, you know, my take on, you know, what I saw in the book now. So in some, and again, a majority of the book is a is good, you know. From staircase to stage is definitely worth purchasing. Because it does provide some unique insights into the Wu-Tang Clan, particularly Raekwon the Chef. However, it will also change some fans' views of the group in general and Raekwon in particular. And I don't know if Ray, that's what Raekwon intended, but it seems like exposing RZA was one of his objectives of this book. And it kind of overshadows the good that that makes up the book but uh read the book yourself check it out as i said it's on all platforms where books are distributed let me know in the comments what you thought about it peace